Welcome to Top Notch Online TV, a paragon of excellence. Today with me, with you is teacher Rispa, a teacher of PCA Kikui High School, an examiner as well as an author. We continue to further demystify an artist of the floating world. If you have not joined us, you can search through the internet and find our earlier episode on the introduction and our first episode that we are looking at the time era of June 1948. What were the what were the uh, occurrences in that uh, in that episode? We are going to continue further with the plot analysis. As we are looking at the plot analysis, we are trying to understand what is going on. Basically, episode one, we were getting acquainted with m most of the characters, and then later on, we are learning their influences on one another. Welcome as you continue. Thank you for joining us. The last time we are looking at something very crucial that Ono's daughter, who is Noriko, the intended fiancé had decided to cut short the marriage negotiations that we are, we are going to call in the book Miai. And according to Ono, he was giving a reason that they were a family that was honest and they looked at their family versus the owner's family and they felt that they could not match. Therefore, they called off the engagement. Now we want to find out the true reason. But also, Setsuko during her visit had told the father, Father, could you settle your past? Any, in, any issue within your past that can come to haunt the future, could you please settle it so that my sister can get married? And the sister Noriko is actually getting older. We are being told at that time that Noriko was was 27 years of, of age. She was ripe for marriage, but her earlier marriage negotiation that she had thought would have been a walk in the park. She had been acquainted with Jiro Miyake, and they just thought that the marriage negotiation was simply a formality that they were going to sail, sail through and they were going to become husband and wife, but it did not come to pass. This leaves Noriko bitter somehow towards the father. She feels that the pulling out of the Miyake's family must have had something to do with the father's past. Now people might be wondering, what was it about the father's past? An artist of the floating world, we are talking about Ono, and Ono was someone who used to paint some kind of propagandist paintings. Paintings that were inciting people to go to war. Now, after they lost the war, such actions were being considered as war crimes. Why should people do that that makes people to go to war? They were being looked at as war criminals. Some of them were taking responsibility for their actions. And in the introduction, I talked about Harakiri. Harakiri honorable suicide you kill yourself instead of bringing shame to your family and one among the people uh you know the story takes a back and forth therefore we also need to understand the past as you're getting into the present among the people who had committed harakiri we are learning of miyake's jiro miyake's boss there's a time that ono had run into jiro miyake and jiro miyake had felt some kind of embarrassment running into his intended father-in-law then they go to uh, they go ahead to exchange pleasantries and as they were exchanging pleasantries they get to talk about the head of their mother company of jiro miyake's mother company he had taken his own life as a, as a way of apologizing for his company's involvement into taking the, uh, the country to war. And according to Miyake, the way he was telling Ono, this was something very respectable. Now they could be, they were relieved. The people who were working in that company, they felt relieved. Now we are seeing that, according to them, that suicide was not so bad after all. Back to the issue at hand. They are trying to avert any possibility that Noriko won't get married. Therefore, what is the right approach to take? As had been advised by Setsuko, his elder daughter, Ono decides to make amends and he starts to go, he starts to go visiting people from his past, according to these Japanese people during the Miai. The two families are allowed to get their own investigator to look into that family, to investigate that family, to find whether it is suitable to marry into the other family. Now Ono knows that he cannot avert an eventuality that 
The investigator of the new family, Saito's family, will be investigating their family. What if they find some skeletons in their closet? He goes ahead and visits one among his older friends, a person by the name of Matsuda. Matsuda was a person who, had, who was the one who recruited Ono into painting the propagandist kind of paintings. And they had been of the same kind of ideology. They had, all, they had been engulfed by the spirit of nationalism. Therefore, they each were playing their role. As an artist, what is your role? They would paint uh, pictures that were appealing to the emotions of people. Let's attack China. Let's expand our territories. That is what Ono is guilty of in the eyes of the people. And then when he went to visit Matsuda, he found that Matsuda's uh, health was failing. Matsuda is almost the same age as Ono, an old man, but he had never been married, ne neither had he ever had children. His health was failing and he was being taken care of by a certain Mrs. Suzuki. And he, even sitting up, he couldn't sit up for so long, but the mission that Ono had come for was ensure that when the investigators visit you, please be sure that you talk only the positive about my past. He wouldn't have wanted his past to be a hurdle in his daughter's new marriage negotiation. That is, that is it. But then there's another aspect. As uh, he is, as he is having a word with Matsuda, Matsuda tells him, but anyway, uh, Mr. Ono, if there's any eventuality you should avert, please talk to one of your former students by the name of Kuroda. And, uh, According to Ono, he doesn't know where to find Kuroda. But then from what you're understanding, as much as they used to be, uh, Kuroda used to be his protégé, some kind of student that he used to ha hold, high, hold in high regard, right now they are estranged. They do not have a good relationship. Let me go back to a flashback on something that happened between uh, Ono, Masuji Ono, and his former student by the name of Kuroda. There's a time that uh, it was raining, and then Ono got to see Kuroda. Kuroda was not wearing a hat under his umbrella, and as he was, he, sta he stood still and he started to stare at Ono. Ono was now looking at Kuroda, wondering, is he about to form? Is he is he about to bow? And among the Japanese, to bow is a sign of respect. But then. Kuroda maintained a glance at him and then he walked away. That was already an, a sign that these people were estranged. The relationship was no longer as it was formerly. If you can remember how it was formerly, they used to be at the Migihidari, always drinking together and Ono was very proud of this particular student. But then Matsuda tells him, if there's any eventuality to be averted, please go and speak to uh, Kuroda. And he claims that he doesn't, even if he wanted to speak to Kuroda, he doesn't know where he will. He might find Kuroda. The story advances further. And as the story advances, we are now looking at later on, he goes, he learns that, he learns that Dr. Saito, the one who is supposed to be his new, uh, uh, the one who's supposed to be Noriko's new father-in-law, the Miyaki is pulled out. Now the Saitos are intending to uh, be engaged to the family of Ono. Mr. Saito once mentioned that, by the way, we have a friend in common, someone by the name of Kuroda. He now works at the same university that Mr. Saito was working at. And now this one worries Ono. What if someone from his past by the name of Masuda would say anything negative about him? He needs to put everything into perspective. He goes ahead to that university. He talks to the art department, someone in the art department, and he's able to be given the address of Kuroda. Then when he goes to find Kuroda, whom does he encounter? He finds that Kuroda is out for a while, but then he encounters a young man, a young man by the end or by the name of Enchi. Enchi is a man about 20 years of age, and he welcomes Ono into the house, assuming that Ono is, uh, is a colleague of Kuroda. He even goes ahead and out of politeness offers, I will go ahead and prepare some tea for you. As they're still speaking, Ono observes paintings on the wall and 
on from the painting he, he thinks that these are paintings of Kuroda. He says Kuroda's style is very is very unique. I can tell that these are, are his paintings. Only for the young man Enchi to be very flattered from it. He says this I'm far from being my teachers I'm far from being anywhere near my teacher's work but then it is such an honor that my work can be compared to that of my teacher Kuroda we're also learning that Enchi had be, is being hosted he is being hosted by Kuroda we are looking at Kuroda he, lo he looks like he's kind and Kuroda uh had taken had taken in en Enchi after he had been evicted from his previous apartment. He couldn't help but throw about paint. He's also an artist. He's, he was throwing about paint on the tatami. Therefore, the landlord decided to evict him. Then by um, mere coincidence, Enchi comes to realize that he had never asked the name of the current visitor. Upon inquiring his identity, who are you? The man goes ahead and says, I'm so impolite. I should have I should have introduced myself. I'm someone by the name of Ono. Upon hearing the, the name Ono, Enchi, who had previously been very polite towards Ono, even offering him tea, have a seat, wait for Kuroda, he won't be long gone. He now changes his demeanor and he is now mean towards Ono. And he goes ahead and says, in fact, I don't think Kuroda will be happy to have found you here. I'll tell him you passed by. I'll pass your message that you were around. But Kuroda will not be happy to, to find you inside his house. Ono goes ahead and accuses him of, you're such a young man. You didn't even know what you're talking about. But then Enchi also has some insight. And you know that uh, Enchi and Kuroda... Uh, Enchi admires Kuroda a lot, his own teacher. We are looking at something that also emanates a lot from the book. We are looking at teacher-student relationship that we shall look at one among the themes. It will be about teacher-student relationship. And students tend to be very, uh, to be admiring, to have a lot of admiration for their teachers. One among them, we are looking at Enchi having some kind of admiration for his own teacher, Kuroda. He goes ahead and accuses Ono. What you did was not good. Do you know that it cost him a lot? And now we are learning that the falling out of Kuroda and Ono, you can remember the day that Kuroda saw Ono, but he never bowed in respect. In fact, he went the other way. We are learning that there was an estrangement. And what happened is that uh, according to information that Ono had given, it ended up with Kuroda being imprisoned. And now Kuroda has come out of prison and he has shared his narrative with his, his new protégé, who is Enchi. Enchi carries his, carries his grief. What my teacher went through, I can also feel it. He, he feels the burden the teacher went through. He says that every time the teacher was in detention, Kuroda was in detention, he had been jailed for quite some time. He had only been, re he'd been released after the end of the war. As he, was being, as he had been jailed, he was always being hit on the shoulder, something that he has never recovered from up to the very present. Anyway, after that, after being denied to wait for Kuroda, he decides it won't be of any benefit to me to, co to continue staying over here. Let me do what? Let me just go away. So we see that Ono goes and he ends up penning a, he ends up penning an, a letter to Kuroda asking him that he would like that they be, uh, he would like that they meet for something. But then there is, and his, we are being told his letter was one that was full of friendliness. But the counter reply from Kuroda was that any meeting between them won't be productive. In other words, Kuroda is unforgiving. What he went through because of honor, he's not ready to put it behind him. Now Ono, in trying to uh, bridge the gaps from his past that might mar the marriage negotiation of his younger daughter, they turn futile because he could not speak to Kuroda. And maybe if the investigator had to come up to Kuroda, he doesn't know if Kuroda would speak about him in positive light or in the negative. That is what we are seeing. And then we are also seeing another episode an episode of the miai finally they have to 
the two families have to have some kind the Miai, if you could look at the definition, it is a marriage interview. This family gets to ask the other, they get to have a meal together, they get to exchange uh, uh, ideas, they also get to exchange information. We need to know about your family, you also need to know about our family. Now during that Miai, first of all something did not go well with, uh, with Ono, Masuji Ono. According to him, the hotel they had picked had nothing Japanese in it. Therefore, he felt it was not the right venue. But then the other side th that intended to marry his daughter, the Saitos, had protested and said they loved the food from, they loved the food from that particular hotel. Therefore, it was settled that they were going to have their, uh, their marriage interview at that particular meeting. We're also looking at, on that final day of the Miai now, when they're preparing to go and meet the Saito's family, Noriko seems to, her, to be exhibiting a lot of bitterness. And we're learning that this girl, what she is holding against the father is the fact that the father's past is the one that is standing in the way of her getting married. She is first getting older. And now to, to uh, exhibit this kind, to display the kind of bitterness she has towards the father, Noriko keeps uh, dwelling on some, on things that are not even the exact issue. She's talking about to the father and telling him that you are taking forever to, you are taking forever to get ready. On the other side, the father had, in good humor, joked that you are really preparing yourself a lot. You might think that this is the actual, this is the actual marriage that is taking place. And the girl goes ahead and even tells him, Father, you always have a way of ruining things, uh, interfering with things. And the father by then was preparing some flowers from a certain bush. He was trying to trim some flowers to be in shape. And the girl keeps uh, accusing the father. You are always ruining things. But that is some kind of bitterness that she's projecting. The exact reason she's bitter, we know, but then she's trying in a way to project the bitterness towards the father. Then comes the actual Miai. They are meeting at that particular hotel. As they're meeting at that particular hotel, we are learning that the Saito's family, among them the son Taro, who is intending to marry Noriko, the family seems to be cordial, the family seems friendly. But then there's someone that does not sit well with uh, Masuji Ono. The name of the person is someone by the name of Mitsuo. We shall call him Mitsuo Saito. He is the youngest son of the Saitos. He keeps casting a glance at Ono, and Ono is feeling uneasy about that glance. You know, someone who feels people know something about me. A guilty conscience will, also, will always be reacting. And in his mind, he, he also says he is not sure whether it is because of this guy, this young man, the fact that he was in the same university with Enchi, the same university that Kuroda teaches at, I don't know whether it was the reason that he was finding the young man unsettling. The young man had a way of making him nervous. And at the same time, the young man Mitsuo was of the age of Enchi. And you can remember the encounter with Enchi, where Enchi had turned Ono out of Kuroda's house. Uh, as they're still exchanging stories, what happens is that uh, they talk about by, by way of passing, they talk about Kuroda. And now Ono decides to attack the situation and face it head on. He goes ahead and is asking Yami, young Mitsuo, I'm sure Mr. Kuroda teaches in, your, teaches in your university. How has he been speaking about me? I'm sure if he has spoken about me, it can't be in good light. But then a young Mitsuo answers, You know what? I'm not talented in the arts, therefore I have not had a lot of encounter with Kuroda. But then uh, uh, Ono, who's already determined to take the bull by the horn, you attack the problem be before their problem attacks you, he decides to go ahead and speak. And he now finally confesses something that he has always been trying to run away from. He has always been trying to run away from his involvement in the war. His paintings that were pro Pagandist, that they were that they were the ones whipping up the emotions of people, making the people to go ahead and fight other nations. But then some people are bitter towards honor. They feel as much as you are inciting people to go into war, you remained unscathed. Look at you, nothing bad happened to you. Many people lost their lives 
Japan suffered embarrassment, but you are still, you're still standing, you're still where you are. That is what is making some people very bitter towards, uh, very bitter towards Ono. Then Ono decides to speak about this thing that he has always been pushing to the back of his mind, hoping that it goes away altogether. And he goes ahead and says, what he was doing back then, his paintings, he, be, he was doing them and he was doing it to his best because he believed that they were being done in good faith. He was, he felt that during that time, the nation needed that. They needed to be nationalized. They needed to be aggressive so that they can conquer new territories. And once he said that, it is like a burden had been lifted off his shoulders. Even though people are saying, people like Taro and even uh, Taro's mother, they're talking about why are you so hard on yourself? Has your father always been this uh, judgmental over himself? They are playing it cool like it is no big deal. And after that, we are seeing that everything seems to have been settled. Even when people are laughing, they are laughing with ease. Even when, uh, even when Mits, um, uh, young Mitsuo might be casting a glance at Ono, Ono is no longer holding that guilty conscience. He finally has let it out. And... After that, he feels that this second marriage negotiation for Noriko will finally be a success. I'll take you a bit far. Uh, I'll take you a bit far and we are going to talk about, we are going to remember someone by the name of Suichi. Uh, when they're in that Miai, young Taro, the one who intends to marry Noriko, he reminds Ono so much about Suichi. Suichi, the one who married his elder daughter, Setsuko. Suichi had been as kind as Taro was right then. But then something in Suichi changed. In fact, Suichi was someone who was bitter. And there's a time during Kenji's uh, burial of the ashes, the son of, uh, the son of Ono died during that war. And his ashes were sent home for burial. During that burial, you are seeing that Ono's son-in-law, Suichi, had held some kind of bitterness. He couldn't even stomach the whole ceremony he had left early and he had complained bitterly and said that the people the older generation he was bitter towards the older generation they're the ones who incited the younger generation to go into war and then the younger generation dies you know he can associate with the younger generation because it might as well have been him and the older people came out and skated and this has always made Suichi very bitter and he is now losing the respect for Ono, that one I had to mention as I'm juxtaposing Taro to Suichi. Coming to the end of this episode two, the episode of April 1949, I'll talk about after the Miai. The episode ends with Masuji Ono going back and having a conversation with Mrs. Kawakami. Mrs. Kawakami had still, um, was still among the people who was holding Ono in high regard. She was trying to tell Ono, you can go back to your earlier acquaintances to, and bring them to my pub now that the Megihidari is no longer standing. You can convince them to come into my establishment and we can grow and expand. And later on, as we are now, as she is finally speaking to him in this particular episode, Ono is advising Mrs. Kawakami to go with the change. She can sell her current place, Mrs. Kawakami's place, and go start over anew elsewhere. And he even promises her that he will visit her new establishment. But we're now seeing there is the theme of change. Change is now taking impact. Old buildings are being replaced. Attitudes of people are being changed. And that is it about episode two. Thank you for your time. Thank you for joining. That is it for today.